Things change. The people that you want to benefit from your trust today may not be the people that you want to benefit from your trust down the road. Which is why when people set up trusts, they often have the question, can I add or remove beneficiaries down the road? The answer is maybe. As always, it depends on several factors. So when you set up a trust, the settlor initially names the beneficiaries. Now, sometimes those beneficiaries are named by name, right? Paul's going to benefit or Paul and Joe are going to benefit. Sometimes they're named by a class. So for example, my children or my spouse or my parent, or you can name something like all of my bloodline family descendants. And that would then not just include your children, but anybody who descends from their bloodline. Whether or not beneficiaries can be added or removed after the initial formation of the trust depends on how the trust document is drafted. Some trusts don't allow for the addition or removal of beneficiaries, why others do. The trust document of those trusts that do allow for the addition or removal of beneficiaries will specify the procedure for adding and removing the beneficiaries and when it can be done. For example, some trusts allow the settler to amend the beneficiaries during his lifetime. Others may allow the trustee to do it. Yet others may have some sort of a combination, right? So the settler can add or remove beneficiaries with the consent of the protector or the trustee, or the trustee can add and remove beneficiaries with the consent of the trustee and protector. It just all depends on how the trust document is written. I mean, there's a lot of different ways that the, that the clauses governing the addition and removal of beneficiaries can be drafted. I mean, the possibilities are endless. There's wide latitude in how you draft these provisions. The trust document may also limit when the trust can be amended. So for example, maybe beneficiaries can only be added or removed during the lifetime of the settler or during the first five years of the trust and after that it can't. Again, there's wide latitude in how these provisions for adding and removing beneficiaries and when it can be done can be drafted. You can also limit the types of beneficiaries that can be added and deleted. For example, you could say bloodline family members may not be deleted, but others can. Or charities may be added and removed, but no other beneficiaries can be added or removed. Again, you can draft the provisions for adding and removing beneficiaries almost however you want. There's, there's really a lot of latitude in drafting here. It's also important to keep in mind that some jurisdictions have laws that limit the ability to change beneficiaries under circumstances or limits on who can be added as a beneficiary. For example, in Malta, they have something called a family trust and that limits the scope of family members that can be added and nobody other than family members can be added, for example. And even that, there's a definition of who is considered a family member. And in some cases, a court may need to approve changes to beneficiaries of a trust. This is often the case if there's a dispute over the changes or if the settler's no longer capable of making those changes or the settler's died. Normally, the court approval will be granted if all the parties involved agree, right? So it, let's say you have a trust document where the changes aren't possible and the trustee, the settler, if he's still living, and all the beneficiaries agree, then a lot of times you can get a court to approve the changes in the beneficiaries. You also have to be aware of beneficiary rights. So beneficiaries have certain rights when it comes to trusts, including the right to receive information about the trust and its assets, and the right to challenge changes to the trust if they believe it was made in bad faith or for improper reasons. So you also be mindful of that even if you have the ability to change the trust that you're respecting the beneficiary's rights. There can also be tax implications to changing the beneficiaries. Changing the beneficiaries of trust, like I said, can have tax implications, particularly if the trust is a testamentary trust or a generation skipping trust. If you like our content, please don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel by clicking that subscribe button. We'd really appreciate it. And for more strategic tips on international tax and wealth planning, subscribe to our email list and follow me on LinkedIn. Links below. You also have to consider trust administration. Beneficiary designations must be handled with care and updated in a timely manner, as well as communicated to the trustee and any other relevant parties to ensure the trust is properly administered and the beneficiary's rights are protected. So let's say, for example, you're the settler, you retained the right to change the beneficiaries, you have to notify the trustee in a timely manner that you exercise that right and change these beneficiaries because otherwise the trustee is not gonna know and then those new beneficiaries or the beneficiaries that were changed, their rights may be violated. So you have to be very mindful that there's a lot involved when you do change beneficiaries, even when it is possible. I generally recommend drafting trusts in such a way that the beneficiaries 
can be added, deleted, or amended, but specify a procedure that doesn't allow the settler to do it on their own, as it generally gives them too much control and which diminishes asset protection and can have negative tax consequences. I normally recommend that the settler can change the beneficiaries only with the consent of another party. So for example, the settler needs the trustee or the protector to consent to the change, or the trustee can make the change with the consent of the settler or the protector. This limits the power of the settler to act alone and provides better asset protection and more tax benefits. Now, the reason I say that is because if a settler can make the change alone, a court could order them to make a change, for example, to add and distribute money to settle a claim against a beneficiary, or the tax authorities could say, well, you have the power to determine who benefits the, from the trust, so the assets don't really belong to the trust, they really still belong to you, and therefore we're gonna tax you on all of the trust's income. That's not something you really want, right? So that's why I usually recommend some sort of an amendment procedure that requires at least two people. Nobody should be able to, to act alone in terms of adding or removing beneficiaries in most situations. Getting the most out of your trust requires careful planning. Every scenario and its consequences needs to be gone through and addressed. So it really requires a lot of thinking through how this is really going to operate in practice, what powers you want, and what the consequences of retaining those powers are. I mean, this is something I do a lot of is helping clients plan their trust. How's it gonna be managed? Who will benefit? When and how it can be amended? Who has those powers, et cetera? I mean, this is something, like I said, that requires a lot of careful planning to make sure that you're gonna get all the benefits out of your trust, but still have the flexibility that is gonna make you feel comfortable and that you wanna have in your trust. At the end of the day, you're gonna get out of your trust what you put into it. Planning a trust properly is a lot of work, but at the end, it's a superior result. You get a much better trust that's gonna function the way you want for generations to come. If you're interested in setting up or restructuring your trust, we welcome the opportunity to help. Give us a call or shoot us an email at info at esquiregroup.com to set up a consultation. And to learn more about trusts or foundations, feel free to download our Trusts and Foundations Guide. I'll put a link down in the description. Thank you.